Today we will go through the initial programming of the Cirrus 8000i yield monitor. So after installation, to begin, this is the procedure you'll need to follow to make sure that your console is set up properly. So first power your console on. Simply want to hit the setup key, the red button with the three pages on it. You'll want to start on the setup page, go to number three for factory. So hit number three on your keypad. It's going to ask you for a pin code. Type in one, two, three, four, and then the green enter button. This will bring you into the factory setup mode. The only thing that needs to be changed in this particular factory settings are the combine select. So you hit number one for combine select and you will scroll through all of the combines until you reach the desired combine. If your combine is not in the list, simply leave the combine selection on default combine type and press the green enter button. So at this point, you can hit the escape button. You have now selected your combine and there are no other settings in the factory settings that need to be changed and you can hit the escape key again. So at this point, Go ahead and hit number two on your keypad to go into the technician menu. It's going to ask you for a pin number again. It's one, two, three, four, and the enter button. The first line item is PC line points. If your combine is in the combine list and you selected an actual name of a combine and not default combine, there is no reason to go into this setting. If you selected a default combine, and that curve does not work for your combine and you find inaccuracies, you will want to enter into the PC line points and run the AutoCal procedure described in your manual. So at this point we will escape out and head back to the technician menu and you will need to go into the moisture sensor which is number two. So hit number two on your keypad. At this point what you need to look at are the gain and offset numbers. It tells you what crop you're in at the bottom and your supplementary installation instructions provided will show you what numbers for every crop need to be in the monitor. So if the numbers are not correct, simply change the numbers to the appropriate number and use the A-F button to change the crop that you're on. So you will want to go through and change every crop and make sure that the gain and offset numbers are appropriate. Once you're done changing those gain and offset numbers, simply hit the escape key. So at this point, we will move on to the angle sensor, uh, which is number three. So simply hit number three on your keypad. The combine at this point needs to be on fairly level ground, uh, as level as possible. And you will want to hit the down arrow key until you get in front of V, LH slash RH. That is the left and right hand slope compensation. You'll want to make sure that you hit the set zero button with the arrow indicator in front of that. At this point it will angle, at this point it will zero out the left and right hand angle sensor and you should hit the down arrow key and do the same thing to the forward and rearward tilt. So hit the set zero button again and now your angle sensor is zeroed out and you can hit the escape button. The next line item is temperature sensor. Hit number four on your keypad. Make sure that your temperature sensor reads appropriately. All temperatures are in degrees Celsius. So in this particular case, it is not negative 23 degrees out. So we will enter the appropriate degrees Celsius. So at this point, once you've changed the temperature to read the appropriate temperature, hit the escape button. The next line item on the list is GPS and precision farming setup. Hit number five on your keypad to enter this mode. The only thing that really needs to be checked in this particular location is the NEMA message. So make sure that you scroll down to the NEMA message and for any loop GPS receivers it will need to be set on 4800 baud rate. If you are using some external GPS receiver Make sure you know the baud rate of that and make sure that it matches the baud rate set in the Cirrus 8000i unit. Once you've set the baud rate, you can hit the escape button. And now what you will want to do is hit the star button for more. On 
this part of the technician menu. This is a printer setup and a header setup switch. There's really nothing on these two particular pages that uh, you need to change in the standard kit. So simply hit, hit the escape button again. Hit the escape again to exit out of the technician menu. And now you're back at your main setup menu. And you will want to now hit the one button for operator. In the operator menu, you can see number one is units. We'll hit number one. It's already on bushels. There's nothing that needs to be changed. Simply hit the escape key. Number two is the header setup. So hit number two. And it will come up with a default header setup. It says default at the top of your screen. If you change this header width, it will change every header width for every crop. So if we put in here that we have a 25 foot platform is 300 inches we will say that it has four sections and our width reset we will turn to on. The width reset is when you come to the end of the field and raise your head up. When you lower it back down it will automatically default to a full header width. So the rest of the, the cutout height and the status and the rest of the things on the screen are only used if you are using the variable header switch found on the combine itself. So once you have set this, you can go down and go to set all to default. This has now set every crop to 300 inches. If we want to change a particular crop, you must scroll through the crops by using the right and left hand arrow key at the bottom of your screen with the arrow indicator on the crop name at the top. And now you can go through and set up different header width for different crops so that when you select the particular crop it will bring that header width with it. So what we will do is set up the corn to 6 row 30. We'll put in 180 inches. We'll put that one to six sections. And now every crop except for corn is set at 300 inches and four sections and corn is set at 180 and six sections. So once you go through every particular crop and set up the header width Go ahead and hit the escape key. The next line item is function name and values. There's nothing that you need to change on that particular item. Number four is for tag names. If you're logging and you want to use tags to mark either landmarks, weeds, or any particular location in a field, you can go in and change these particular names to whatever you would like. Um, there's eight tags available. Um, most people don't use very many of them. So you can simply hit the escape key and leave that alone if you'd like. The next line item is five for speed factor. So hit five on your keypad and it says GPS speed on off and it says off. If you're using the GPS receiver for speed, you'll want to hit the right hand arrow at the bottom of your screen, turn that to on and the rest of the text on the screen should go to a light shade so that it is unselectable at this point. So once you've changed that GPS speed to on, just hit the escape button again. Now we're on to the next line item which is more, so hit your star button for more. First line item for more in the operator menu is the clock set. Simply hit number one on your keypad, go into the clock set. All clock sets are in military time. So here it's 1 p.m. So we'll put in 13, zero minutes. It's the sixth day of July, 2012. You can pick your format of a 24 hour clock or a 12 hour clock. So it's entirely up to you and you will see a change at the top of your screen when you do that. But you will enter all the numbers in military time. So simply hit the escape button once you've set your clock. Number two is for this, the display settings. There's the brightness and the contrast. Most of the time the factory settings are suitable. Simply hit the escape button when done setting that. Um, you have your yield delay in there. This is going to be, that's number three, this is going to be something that is settable by you and will, will need you to look at the time delay when you first head into the field the first time on how long it takes for the grain to reach the tank. 
typically you will take two seconds off of that time and put that number in for your yield delay. Most combines range between eight and 12 seconds. So we'll put 12 seconds in here, hit the escape button. Uh, the next line item is smoothing. There's nothing there that you need to change. The machine number for number five, nothing you need to change there. And uh, the print Cal data, there's nothing else that you need to do there.